Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and today I'm going to be bringing you part two of my thoughts and experiences on rereading the Hunger Games books and rewatching the movies in preparation for the release of Ballad and Songbird and Snakes. So in this video I'm going to be discussing Catching Fire, which is my favorite book to movie adaptation of all time and Catching Fire may easily be one of my favorite movies of all time, period. It's just so good. I remember being in the theater opening weekend and being so nervous to see this film because I just wanted it to live up to the books and I knew that there was going to be a new director and I was worried about how that was going to affect the franchise, especially because I thought the first film was so good and Francis Lawrence just blew it out of the water and I just have so much respect for him and the work that he did to bring this movie to life. I'm so excited to dive in and discuss the book and the movie with all of you. So we're gonna do just that. Of course, this is the spoiler warning. If you for some reason haven't read Catching Fire or watched the movie, you should go and do that. But without further ado, I'm just gonna dive right on into discussing Catching Fire. I think my favorite scene in Catching Fire, or at least one of the ones that I think is the most powerful for me, is this conversation between Snow and Katniss that takes place towards the beginning of the film because it's essentially Snow warning Katniss that she has started uprisings and rebellions and that her action with the berries carries weight and that it is a symbol of defiance against the capital and that it cannot stand. And I think it's such a powerful moment of seeing these two characters really juxtaposed from each other and I think we are going to look at these moments so differently after reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and I'm so excited about that to sort of get a better understanding of what's going on inside Snow's head. But Katniss's response in terms of how she deals with Snow is so brilliant and Jennifer Lawrence and Donald Sutherland just do such a good job of bringing this dynamic between these two characters to life and Katniss essentially makes this comment about how the government must be very fragile if a handful of berries can threaten to upend it and she doesn't really understand what she later finds out in Mockingjay which is that the capital relies on the districts more than the districts rely on the capital so the minute that the districts realize that and decide to unify is the minute that the capital is done for and the berries are a symbol of that and are a recognition of that in other districts starting to see that and seeing that little conversation and like the sparks of it start to develop throughout the series is so cool. One of the things that I did, and because I'd watched Catching Fire so many times, I also listened to Francis Lawrence and Nina Jacobson's audio commentary on the film, rather than just watching the film itself and hearing Francis Lawrence talk about that scene and what he did to put it together and how they kept it considerably long just because there was so much going on within it and that both Jen and Donald did such a good job of bringing it to life that it didn't feel like very heavy because they kept you captivated, I thought was just so interesting and I loved seeing how that scene came together. The victory tour is even more powerful because Katniss has this weighing, lingering fear on her of how her actions are not just a one-time thing, that she's not going to be allowed to get away with what she did, that she's not going to be able to just go back to District 12 and just pretend like nothing ever happened and try to forget that she is going to have to live this lie for the rest of her life and is going to have to pretend to be in love with PETA and is going to have to convince all the district that she's madly in love with him. And this whole montage in the movie and in the books ultimately shows the districts are not buying it because they see her as the symbol of hope and they see the things that she did in the games and see her defiance and her strength and her unwillingness to be a prop to anybody else's agenda and so her just reading off the cards does not make people in the districts happy and so you start to see some people start to rebel and the peacekeepers having to interfere. No moment is more powerful during this victory tour than in District 11 because PETA goes off the cards and he offers to give a portion of his earnings to Rue and Thresh's families because Katniss and Peter are only alive because of Rue and Thresh and it's such an emotional moment because Rue is the Mockingjay, she's the beginning of this rebellion and seeing the man in District 11 be shot, seeing Hamish have to take Katniss and Peta in under his wing and really have to explain to them that like that you can't do that and having Katniss have to come out and say that Snow had visited her and threatened her and having to really have to trust in her team and have some conversation with them and it's such a powerful powerful moment and Frances Lawrence just did such a good job of bringing it to life on screen and really hitting home the full emotional impact of that moment. Another scene that I thought was really really beautiful was the party at Snow's mansion in the capital. 
This was shot at the Swan House in Atlanta and I so badly want to visit there because I think it was such a brilliant set choice by Phil Messina who does all of the set design because it just looked so perfect for the exterior of Snow's Mansion. Trish Somerville and V. Neal did such a wonderful job with creating all of these capital looks. Each look was so beautiful and so stunning and I was just obsessed with all of it. It just made my heart so happy to see that visually on screen and I think it's also a really powerful moment because it's the first time that Katniss confronts Snow after this whole victory tour and Snow tells her in a very silent but deadly way that she has not convinced him or the districts and that she has not done her job and she will now have to pay for it. His little nod of disapproval to her just carries so much weight. I think that moment is also really brilliant because you get to see Snow take a sip out of his champagne glass and see some blood fall back into the glass and so you get a little bit of a hint at something that gets revealed later on in Mockingjay Part 1 and I think that's just a really really smart move by Frances Lawrence because it kind of leaves you wondering and it's this lingering detail that does get explored upon later but you left thinking about it and I think that's really cool. So one of the characters that you get to meet at Snow's Mansion is Plutarch Heavensby. I don't think I appreciated Plutarch enough as a character in the first few times that I read this series but I definitely have more of an appreciation for him now because I think I have a deeper understanding of what his character is having to go through having to play both sides and having to have this very fine line between doing what Snow wants but also enacting his own agenda and making sure that Katniss stays alive and so in the books he warns her about the arena being a clock with the watch. Obviously they couldn't do that in the movie because it would be too dead of a giveaway and it would be way too obvious. You do instead get conversations between Plutarch and Snow and you sort of get a little bit of an indication that Plutarch has some alternate plans but that he is trying to work with Snow and is trying to make sure that Katniss is kept subdued and trying to assure Snow that he will do what it takes to squish this rebellion and to make sure that Katniss is no longer a threat. But I think like one of my favorite moments with Plutarch and Snow is when Katniss at the very end of the film shoots the arrow into the force field and all of the cameras go out and Snow has like no access to what's going on inside the games and he starts calling for Plutarch and he realizes that he's gone and it's oh it's such a good moment because it's like this realization of this character is not who you thought he was and it's it's just such a bombshell moment and I just love that scene it's so powerful and I'm just obsessed with Plutarch as a character and Philip Seymour Hoffman did such a good job of bringing him to life. I just thought he was such a great character and I just love him so much and find him so interesting and so fascinating. Another thing that Catching Fire does really really well is bring us this whole new set of characters that are incredibly complex and interesting that you just grow to love throughout the rest of the series. I'm talking about Finnick O'Dare, Joanna Mason, Beatty, like they're just such interesting people and they each have their own unique backstories and you just wish you could get more into them and really understand what's going on inside their heads because they also have knowledge of this rebellion that's taking place and it's like the one thing that really makes me wish that the Catching Fire book was written in third person because I want to see how Plutarch maneuvered and did all of that. Like how did he have conversations with these tributes? How much did each of them know? What was the game plan? When did this come into place? When did Haymitch find out about it? Because obviously once there's the announcement for the quarter quell, Haymitch makes promises to both Katniss and Peeta that he is not able to keep and at some point he ultimately decides that he has to keep his promise to Peeta and keep Katniss alive and get her out the arena even if it means upsetting Katniss and getting her really really mad because she wanted Peter to live because she thought he deserved it which I mean he absolutely does but all of these characters are so fascinating because they're so much more mature they have experience in the games they have this immense knowledge of how it works like it's a much more mature environment you don't really know if you can trust these characters because Katniss and Peter are like the new kids on the block they don't know any of the other victors and it's very easy that they'll be the first ones that are targeted it's interesting to see how human these characters are especially with Finnick like Sam Claflin does such a beautiful job of bringing his character to life and he starts out really suave and smooth talking and you have like his talk about secrets which like again developed so well in Mockingjay part one and the sugar cube scene and then you get into the arena and you see his love for Mags and you see his love for Annie and how he is just a victor from district four like he is a member of district four first before he is a victor and like some capital pawn and capital darling like he has had to live through the games has had to kill 23 other people at 14 and has had to deal with that has had to be 
be a sex slave and has had to basically be sold by the capital and be a capital pawn and he's gone through so much emotionally and is such a delicate and fragile soul and I love him so much. Like I love Finnick and Peta equally. Like I know I love Peta and I would throw any character out of a window for Peta but I would do the same for Finnick O'Dare. They're just both such great characters. Joanna Mason is also a badass. Her moment in the elevator is so great in the books but it's even better in the movies. Jen, Woody, and Josh in an elevator with Joanna. Like it's like there wasn't even any acting that had to be done there. It was just so perfect. But I think the great thing about Joanna as a character is that her and Katniss are very much in juxtaposition but they get this really nice moment before Katniss's interview where she tells Katniss to make Snow pay for making her wear that wedding dress and parade her around like an object and I think that's just so badass of her to have that moment and like the whole interviews is just so beautiful because you get another Peta bombshell about the baby you get all the tributes holding hands like it's a very F you moment to the capital sure you're gonna send us back into the arena sure you want to try to tell us that we're not invincible but we will take you down with us in the process and I love every moment of it I love Beatty as the character I think Jeffrey Wright does such a wonderful job of bringing him to life because he's so smart in seeing the flaws of the capital system and Katniss and him quite actually work quite well together because she's able to take those flaws and be able to really act on them by shooting the force field, by really having that recognition of who the real enemy is. And I think that line from Hamish is so powerful because that's ultimately what this whole movie is about and was what makes it so totally different than the first Hunger Games film because the first Hunger Games film was very reactive and very instantaneous of just go, go, go. But Catching Fire is very much taking more of a step back, seeing the bigger implications and deciding who are the people that you can trust. And ultimately Katniss realizes that the other tributes are her friend, that they are having to go through the same mutual experience that she is and that they are not the enemy, that Snow is the enemy, that the capital is the enemy, that the game makers are the enemy. And her choice to shoot through that force field is just, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so great. It's just, oh, it's amazing. Frances Lawrence does such a great job with these films cinematically. They're very, very different than the first Hunger Games film, which relies on a lot of handheld shots and it's very shaky and unstable. Catching Fire is much more mature and sophisticated and then you have these like wide, sleek, beautiful shots. One of my favorite shots on this entire film that I think is like Academy Award winning is when Katniss goes up the tribute tube and you have the dimensions of the film start to change as the movie begins to be shot in IMAX through the entire arena and it's it's such a visually stunning shot and it's so interesting to see the dimensions change again as they leave the arena but in a much sharper way in a very like instantaneous way it's not as sleek and pretty as it is when she first comes up the tribute to but Frances Lawrence is such a visionary when it comes to film and to cameras and I think having Joel Wilhelms who was the director of cinematography alongside him for that project Process was amazing and I loved getting to hear about the whole process of shooting in different dimensions and I found that so fascinating. I just thought like everything Francis Lawrence did with these films was so brilliant and that he was just such a visionary in terms of being able to take everything that Gary Ross started with and only build upon it and make it better and I love him as a director. He's great. I'm so excited he's returning for the Ballad of Songbird and Snakes. Like these movies are just they're amazing every single one that he's done and he has such an eye for detail and it's amazing just how similar the movies and the books are and it just feels like you're watching the story in the books just unfold on screen like visually as if you're like almost just imagining it it's like that powerful it's just he's great I just he's amazing and I am just stunned by him and what he is able to do and his care and concern for detail. So I'll say the other thing that made me cry re-watching Catching Fire was every time that Lynn Cohen was on screen because I miss her. She was such a great mag. She was so sweet. Particularly watching the bonus features and hearing her talk about her process shooting the films made me cry because she was like so excited to be shooting with Jen and Josh and Sam and get to be with like the younger crew and she just seemed to have like such a smile on her face and such a joy of her life and I miss her. I Miss Lynn Cohen. I was in tears like watching it. I was like sobbing because I just couldn't do it because I was so sad because I missed her and I don't feel like enough people really gave her a proper send off when she died and it just it made me so sad because I love her. She's such a good actress and she was just such a great mags and the entire cast is great and they just all made this story what it was and are just so fantastic. I can't get enough of them and I just have so much respect for the creative team who brought this movie to life. They're all just amazing. So I think that's about it for my thoughts on Catching Fire. 
It is so hard to articulate how much love I have for these books and these movies and just how well done they are. Frances Lawrence is a genius. Everyone in the cast did such a wonderful job of bringing their characters to life. V. Neal did such a wonderful job with hair and makeup. Trish Somerville did such a wonderful job with costuming. Katniss's wedding dress in the movie is absolutely beautiful. All, like all the costumes in this movie are beautiful. It's just unreal how great this movie is. Phil Messina did such a wonderful job with set design. Everything is just fantastic and this movie will forever be one of my favorite movies of all time because it's just that good. So thank you all so much for watching this second part to my reactions on the Hunger Games books and movies. These videos probably are not the best. I really really wanted to just articulate all of my thoughts and opinions but it's so hard because there's so many things going on in these books and movies but I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part three which I discussed Mockingjay but I think that's about it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time in a new one. Goodbye!